A as unlawful. Remember, Trade Union NUMSA and the South African Cabin Crew Association are heading to court in a bid to remove SAA's business rescue practitioners. This follows an announcement that the struggling airline will suspend all its local routes except Johannesburg to Cape Town at the end of this month. Let's get the very latest now and a perspective. We speak to Pakamile Klubi Majola. She's the uh, national spokesperson for NUMSA. Pakamile, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, I guess this, this, this cancellation of certain routes, what sort of impact will this have on your members and their families? Your listeners, truly devastating. The news that the business rescue practitioner announced yesterday um, during our session with him that they intend to cancel 11 routes. What this means is that um, in KZN, in East London, um, PE, as well as in Durban, from the 29th of February, SAA will cease to exist in those areas. And for them to drop that bombshell on us in a session and expect us as Labour to agree for something that we found completely shocking and unacceptable. And worse, they wanted us to accept these conditions outside of any Section 189 process. Um, these are some of the things that they're actually trying to impose on us. Um, we see what we find very strange. In our view, there is no rationale for what they're doing. They say that this is a cost-saving measure. Um, we find it uh, bizarre in the extreme. When you look at, for example, the Durban route, it's a very, very busy route. That is a route that makes SAA a lot of money. It makes no sense why you would cancel such a route and claim you're doing it in the name of cost saving. Pagabila, what sort of consultations has there been uh, with unions and the business rescue practitioners leading up to this point? No consultation whatsoever. What was really astonishing for us is that as we were engaging on these news um, when they were delivering this message, they issued a statement to the media at the same time. So that tells you that there's been no consultation. They have the nerve to write in their statement that they consulted all relevant stakeholders. Labor is a relevant stakeholder, and we were not consulted. That was simply a discussion where they were telling us what they're going to do, and um, we were simply being informed, and we were expected to simply accept. Um, we have serious questions about the validity and the rationale. We asked very probing questions about, for example, um, if they were to cancel these routes, mm. how much money would they make? They couldn't even answer a simple question like that to show you that um, there's no real justification, there's certainly no business rescue plan to, to, to back this up. Um, this was a plan which the South African Airways management devised. This is the same corrupt management which has brought us to the brink, to this point where SAA has collapsed. And the business rescue practitioner is implementing the work of South African Airways management. Do you think they couldn't answer that question or are they just keeping their cards close to their chest? There were many questions that they couldn't answer and it became very clear to us that there had been no due diligence done uh, in terms of how they arrived at why this was necessary. The business rescue practitioner, in our view, is simply executing the work of South African Airways management. Now, that already uh, makes you beg the question as to, is this really business rescue? Um, as Nunsen Saka, we have said from the beginning, since the 5th of December, when government decided that they wanted to embark on voluntary business rescue, that this was not this was going to be a sham. And we've been proven to be correct. It is a sham. Um, these people are simply executing decisions of a corrupt board, and a corrupt executive management, and workers are expected to pay the price for their looting and for their fever. I think it's also very important that your listeners must, must understand, SAA's biggest cost driver never has been labor. SAA's biggest cost driver has always been the corrupt procurement spend of over 25 billion rand per year where no intervention has taken place since 2015. And even at the Zondo Commission yesterday, there was testimony around that to say that one of the contracts at Swissport, for example, uh, which, is, which is choking South 
African Airways. That contract has been in place since 2015. It has continued. It has been renewed on a month to month. This contract was exposed at, uh, through Ernest and Young forensic report as, as being questionable because of, of the uh, expense to SAA. There's been no intervention. Even the business rescue practitioner yeah. has not intervened, but workers must lose their jobs. Okay, Neil, I want to just get your understanding with regards to the basis for the cancellation of this route. So, you know, you spoke about this Johannesburg to Durban route uh, that has been, uh, is one of the routes that have been cancelled. As a layman, you know, with no information in front of me, you would assume that's a busy route, right? Uh, but you, you say this is a profitable route. What sort of numbers do you have in front of you? But you see, the problem we have with the plan is that we, have, we are not convinced that there's any justification. We, we, have, we say this because in any consultation, any proper consultation where Section 189 is being discussed, where retrenchments must happen and companies have to present and explain why they're making certain decisions, they give you a very detailed presentation with a very solid um, breakdown of expenses and costs. So they'll be able to tell you, okay, if we cancel this route and this route and this route, we're going to save X amount. This is, we're doing this because it's costing us X amount. I'm just giving you an example. Mm. None of that happened yesterday. We were simply told we're canceling 11 routes. And yeah. as labor, you must accept it. And to make it worse, this, this, they, we are supposed to by now have a business rescue plan. There's no business rescue plan. So there isn't even a justification or an explanation to back up why they're saying that this thing must happen and must happen so quickly. Um, this is why we are suspicious of the intentions of the business rescue practitioner. We do not believe he is independent. Um, we have seen many examples where the board and the South African Airways management has acted unilaterally um, with him present and he's not known about it. For example, um, a couple of weeks ago when they cancelled those flights, SAA management did so unilaterally without telling the business rescue practitioner. They sold airplanes without telling the business rescue practitioner. So this is another example. The SAA management presented a plan which the business rescue practitioner simply accepted and is now trying to impose on us. You know, and we will be going to court to fight this decision. Let's look at some of the solutions here. Let's look at the future of this airline. What is the most optimum plan in the interest of all stakeholders from, from your perspective? What would it take to get you know, this, this airline back on a prosperous flight path? Well, there are several things that need to happen very, very quickly. First and foremost, because we know for a fact that SAA's biggest cost driver is a corrupt procurement state, the business rescue practitioner, in terms of the law, has the power to renegotiate or cancel contracts for in the interest of the airline. And as I said to you, the Zondo Commission has already confirmed this in the case of Swiss Port. So that's the first thing that needs to happen. Secondly, and, and mind you, the Swiss Port contract isn't the only one. There are many, many evergreen contracts that have those types of arrangements going on. Secondly, as Labour, we've actually done something very progressive in order to try and alleviate the financial burden of SAA. We negotiated in our wage talks um, last year the, the, the implementation of what is called a training layoff scheme. Now, the training layoff scheme is for companies like South African Airways, which are in distress. It allows workers who are facing retrenchment to go on training instead of retrenchment mm. for a minimum period of six months, and their salaries are paid for by the seaters. SAA management went and withdrew that plan unilaterally without discussing it with Labour. And it is bizarre for us that the business rescue practitioner is not implementing that plan. Something like that would immediately help SAA and take the burden off and actually give them the time and the breathing space that they need in order to develop a proper business rescue plan. Third and finally, what needs to happen in terms of the, the medium to, to, to long term is that the plan which um, was devised by the former GC of Wiani Dachan, which involved a joint venture agreement with Emirates, should be implemented. That plan was a viable plan. It was based on the strength of SAA working together with um, Ethiopian Airlines. It meant that both airlines would be able to benefit, from, for example, from SAA technical maintenance um, support, which is... Um, uh, uh, something that adds value to the yeah. airline and would have also positioned them as the most dominant airlines on the continent. 
Now, but because there's a refusal yeah. to do this, it's very clear to us that the agenda here is not to save SAA. The agenda here is to collapse SAA and make and strengthen Mango at the expense of workers at South African Air. When, when Numsa and Saka uh, involved in a task team last year, uh, and, and I understand trying to, among other things, renegotiate or, or, or uh, insource contracts, uh, you know, which were a financial burden to the airline. What, whatever happened to that? That process was suspended by the business rescue practitioner. Mm. And this is why we are deeply suspicious about his motives. Surely that's an obvious intervention that's going to save you money um, very quickly. As Moonsa, for example, we've been involved in that type of work at South African Airways Technical, where we've been working with the procurement department there to identify cost savings around um, costly contracts which are choking South African Airways Technical. So far, we've been able to identify 102 million rand in savings. So we are asking ourselves the question, why is the business risky practitioner refusing to implement such a simple strategy mm. which would immediately uh, get SAA back in the black and save um, its costs in the immediate uh, uh, period? It's clear to us that the agenda here is not to rescue SAA. There's another agenda that we are unaware of, but it's an agenda that involves mass retrenchment of workers yeah. who are paying for the corruption of the SAA board and the SAA executive management. Pagamila, we're running out of time, so we've got to go, but I just need to ask you one final question with, the, uh, with regards to the legal route that you're taking. Tell us a bit more about that very briefly. We will be uh, serving... Um, we have instructed our attorneys to basically intervene, particularly on this issue of what looks like forced retrenchment. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail now, but expect in the next couple of days that we will be taking action on this issue. Pagamela Flubi Majola, NUMSA spokesperson, thank you very much indeed for your reporting.